Real estate is priced to perfection, not leaving a lot of opportunity for investors, according to Warren Buffett. And then also at the end of this video, I'm going to show a worksheet where you can calculate how negative cash flows isn't good for you. For time, and it, it, you know, it's a field that, in general, we understand. We don't bring that much special to the game, but we we understand it. We've made money in it, and uh, actually, at the time that the Nasdaq about hit its high, uh, REITs were quite cheap, in my view. And I, I with I have a less than one percent of my net worth outside of Berkshire, but basically, I had a, I had that portion all in REITs. They're all small ones at that time, and and but they were selling at discounts. At that time, they were selling at discounts to the values of properties, and those values of properties were much more conservatively figured than today. Today, you have uh, very fancy prices on on uh, real estate, and on top of that, you have the REITs uh, often selling at a premium. Though, so I regard REITs as quite unattractive now, certainly compared to five or six years ago. Uh, but that's an ass that that's a group of so securities. That's for an individual, you regard them as unattractive. Yeah. And for a corporation, that much more so. Yeah, right, right. So I'm in California. I just took the average home price and the average rent payment, and I stuck them in a worksheet. So as you can see, in my state, California, 728000 is a home. <clears throat> and I searched uh, mortgage rates, and I got 7% as a reasonable rate right now since the, they've gone up. So I punched that in, 0 0.07. And I calculated a 30-year fixed at 7%, and it's almost $5,000. And the average rent is $1,800. So as you can see, it's a negative cash flow of three grand in California. Times 12, it's 36,500. So given that if people are willing to do that, they're assuming that properties are gonna go up 5% year after year as long as they own it. I make my own worksheets because it helps with stock analysis, but you can do this also for real estate. This implies that the appreciation and any tax benefits have to be greater than 5%. So I go, I go on further and I map it out. So here I have uh, 10 years of cash flows. So we have the price and I assumed that they are correct, assuming that they that they are correct that properties will at least grow five percent you grow the number uh, by five i show it up here you multiply the starting number by five percent and you do that every year and then if you look i have it we have an accumulated loss from the cash flows so you're going to have to lose if you do this deal if you buy right now the average price and you lose money every month you're going to lose for 10 years four hundred thousand dollars but your assumption is you're going to get it back as the home price appreciates if the home does appreciate to from 700 grand to 1.2 million that's a price change of four hundred and eighty thousand so as you can see someone who is who thinks prices are going to go up even if they're right, they have to lose $400,000 to make 480000 in the future. They're going to make, assuming they're correct, $78,000. But then when you calculate it backwards, $78,000 in the future uh, at 10%, I used 10% as a discount rate, is only 30000 today. So if you buy an average home in California and you lose a lot of money every month uh, as a rental you're going to lose thirty thousand dollars oh i'm sorry you're going to make thirty thousand dollars some year in the future now here's the catch if you look at the thirty six thousand that you have to lose just just that one just that negative cash flow and you grow it out at the same discount rate at ten percent in the future it would be ninety four thousand dollars i'm going to say that again you can you can invest the negative cash flow instead of buying an average home. You can invest this negative cash flow from owning a negative cash flow rental property. You can invest that for 10 years at 
and that would be $94,000. And that would be more than losing money for 10 years on a rental property. So I'm glad I did this exercise. I hope you can see how, you know, sometimes it's worth it. Sometimes it's not. I'm sure if the if the property was not losing money, this would be a better deal. If it was making money, of course it would be a better deal. But but mapping it out instead of just praying and hoping that it works out might be a better strategy than just, you know, buying blindly, which I know people that do this buying blindly. I hope it works out for them, but I am not that optimistic. Let me know if you like this or if there's another exercise you'd like to do and uh, we'll go from there. Cheers.